R. Norst. Ja. <laughs>
I guess. <laughs> yeah. uh, Barry Gordy was the uh, the first uh, the leader of Motown uh, yes. music company, and he was the one who gave you your your first chance, right? That's right. <laughs> His advice to us was to go back to high school. He didn't have time for us. Go finish high school, and maybe he would notice us. So again, with my determination, I started to go by the record company on the weekends, and I slowly but surely persuaded them to give me a summer job as a secretary. And I worked for Barry G Gordy. And basically, all I did was to organize the papers on his desk. I couldn't type, I couldn't yeah. take shorthand, but I became his secretary for a summer, for the summer. You also worked as a waitress. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I've done lots of yeah. jobs as a kid. <laughs> well, have nice. you, I didn't what, ever think about it. What, what, what's, the, uh, what's the reason why the Supremes, uh, what, what made it, the Supremes different from the, the other groups? Why? Well, uh, the groups oh. that you mentioned, uh, mm. um, I'm, I'm sure that they didn't come from the same kind of lifestyle we did. No. No. Um, not the Andrews sisters and certainly not the mm. McGuire sisters. Mm. But during the time of the 60s, I really think that uh, the music was coming out of the community. Uh, mm. And it was coming out of family life. I think uh, it was coming out of gospel music. It was coming from um, uh, a reflection of our lifestyle, I think. Mm. And I think the difference that was happening in the 60s is that racial prejudice in America was starting to, there was a breakthrough. Mm. Uh, the young people started disagreeing with the older people's point of view about separation with blacks and whites. And what happened is I think the black kids uh, began to sing a kind of music that began to be accepted by all people. Mm. And I think we were in the midst of that in the 60s. Mm. Um, I remember a lot of the white performers, and this is a little bit of what I tried to talk about in my special Red Hot Rhythm and Blues. In the mid-50s, all America discovered rhythm and blues. Black music was then called race music, and cover records were recordings made by a singer who copied not only the song, but the style of another artist as well. It was a very interesting sound, so I think the Supremes, in a sense, crossed over that. Mm -hmm. We appealed not only to the blacks, but to whites and to the rest of the world internationally. It was a kind of music that kind of cut across all mm -hmm. barriers. They even started to call the music crossover music. Yeah. It was called crossover, mm -hmm. which meant it was kind of cut through all the barriers mm -hmm. that normally were there musically. So actually the civil rights movement just happened and, and it happened at the same time as you happened. It was happening uh, yeah, all uh, in the same thing. There was a, yeah, uh, yeah it was <gasps> basically a reflection of the times mm. very much. Mm. The Supremes started as a quartet, then it became a trio. Mm -hmm. Then the Supremes were, were called Dinah Ross and the Supremes. The press started to notice me more, I started taking more responsibility, I began more making the decisions and being the leader, speaking more in interviews. It's, it was a process that, uh, that took its own lead. In other words, we were almost following the process rather than leading the process. Barry did it for the purpose of making more money, even though we were always split three ways, it was, ne it was always an equal split, but it was really about it was a smart kind of financial move, really, mm. for us. But in Nobody end, ever knows mm, that, though. No. <laughs> but uh, this also led up to the end of the Supremes, and it became uh, Dinah Ross' uh, solo act, right? Uh, yeah. it, it was, it was, the timing was much longer than that, but yeah. even now, as you look back, this, everything seems like we're so close together. Mm. Barry thought that I could be an actress. I wanted to be an actress. He uh, gave me the opportunity to do uh, the first movie. Yes. And I think... Uh, that also deciding that he himself was going to be a movie producer was part of his growing too. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just a manager anymore, he was going to be a movie producer. And he gave his artist the opportunity to be a part of that. Lady Sings the Blues. Lady Sings the Blues. Billy Holiday. Mm -hmm. That was a gorgeous film. <laughs> gorgeous is an yes. interesting word for well, that. Well, <laughs> it certainly was. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> 
But to you, it meant uh, uh, a new world, didn't it? Yeah, I know that in Cannes, for instance, you were received with a five-minute standing ovation. Yes. But you, you'd never had any acting training, had no. you? No. No. Never have. So it just was not nature. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You almost got an Oscar for that one. Yes, yeah. that was yeah. maybe good and maybe yeah. bad. <laughs> but uh, Minelli got it, Liza Minelli. Yes, that's yeah. right. How did you feel then? I had basically um, was uh, dishonest with myself during the process. I kept mm. saying, if I get the Academy Award, it's, it's, it's great. But if I don't get it, it's okay. Yeah, well, you didn't and then it. when I didn't get it, <laughs> I fell apart totally. I yes. didn't know it was so important yeah. to me. I, I got very, um, mm. I cried a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to hurry up and leave the Academy. Um, I didn't want to be there. I didn't want anybody to see me be so unhappy that I didn't get the role, mm -hmm. uh, that I didn't win the award. But uh, I was very, really knocked out and very excited mm -hmm. to have been nominated for the Academy Award. Uh, my first film. I started, uh, um, again, to be able to do television specials. You made quite a lot of friends in the American in the show business world. Uh, would you talk about any special one? How about Michael Jackson, for instance? <laughs> Yes. When I uh, met Michael, he was um, just, you know, he was a little kid. He was, a, um, I think he was nine or ten years old. And uh, I think what Barry Gordy noticed is his energy and my energy were very much the same. He was a little kid that uh, worked very hard and loved to stand up in front of someone and perform. And I was... Uh, fairly successful at that moment and what we did was give a chance for we brought the Jackson 5 to their first viewing on television and uh, again it's just the same as, as the Supremes Michael Jackson began to be the focal point because he was so outstanding Oh, Diane, you got enough hits of your own. Yeah, but I want your hits. <laughs> yes. And also, I'd love to move with you. Did I do that all right? Uh, uh, oh. And when the groove. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh. Mm. Uh, uh, oh. Oh, boy. Uh, you're married, your first marriage, and uh, you got three uh, daughters. Yes. Right? And uh, after a while, uh, the marriage broke up, and you became a single career woman with uh, three daughters. Mm. Uh, how was that, being a career woman and a single, uh, a single mother? Well, looking oh. back now, if I think about it, I remember it was uh, quite a difficult time, mm. uh, because I, I hated to leave the children, and, um, but I had, my mother was alive then, mm -hmm. and my mother was always there with my children and um, it made it easier for me to continue my career. I did very much the same with my older daughters that, that I did with Ross and Evan, mm -hmm. is I really was off work for about two years, but people don't remember that. Mm -hmm. It's very much the same. I, I stopped working and I stayed with the children until I thought that, that I could leave them easily, and then I went back to work. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, you know, did you, uh, uh, are you a hand mother or do you protect your children? What's a hand mother? But it's somebody who, <laughs> who protects the children, for instance, from the outside world, you know, being a, a solo artist, uh, take press, for instance. Are you a... Uh, I'm sure, you, you know, I have a that feeling that most no. mothers are all the no. same or, uh, yes, I'm, I'm no. protective. I hope to, um, to uh, guard against what, what I think might be uh, hard for them to handle at a young age uh, mm. about... Uh, the business of show business. Mm. Yeah, I think I am. I think I even protect them in the house, you know, you know, walking around so they don't hurt themselves. One That's your, normal, I think. One, one of your uh, daughters wanted to go to Hollywood, uh, <laughs> and sh you wouldn't let her, right? This is not exactly true. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> no. Uh. Um, my children, I, I have always uh, supported them in their dreams. Uh. Uh, my oldest daughter is very talented. 
um, and I see that she may go into the direction of show business and at the same time I don't mind that at all because I think she's very good at it what I would try to do is to um, let her be aware of, of keeping a balance in her life because it, mm -hmm. it is it's a kind of business that can go uh, either way you can go up or go down and I would like her to be able to um, not get into a business that might be um, might make her unhappy or uh, I want her to be a successful but she's got to try different things mm -hmm. so it's not I, I would love her to go to Hollywood she mm -hmm. has a wonderful head on her shoulders she can She's all right. But it's a tough world, isn't it? Yes. And so, you know, as a mother, I would rem even if I was not in show business, I would remind her of that. That must be a paradox. Um, on the one hand, one needs the press uh, for publicity reasons. On the other hand, one wants to keep the press at a certain distance, not too, f too close. Now, what are your standards? Where, where, do you have, where does this the limit go? This is exactly the way no. it is. And mm. you have to just decide for yourself mm. which things are important for you to keep to yourself or keep for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I decided I didn't want my children to be uh, photographed as, as young children and um, I did that with all my kids, not mm -hmm. just the two boys but really with m all my children because I thought they're not part of the show. That's part of my life. It's not part of show business, Diana Ross show. Mm -hmm. So I also kept them out of there for, I just thought it was the best thing to do for them growing up. Uh, I don't like to talk about political questions. I don't like to talk about religious questions. I don't like to talk about uh, racial questions. I don't like to talk about financial questions. So I usually try to say that in front to you. Would you please, if you want to ask me some questions, these are the things where I'd like to stay away from. Yeah. And I think that's not difficult because what you believe in uh, religious, it's really your business, you know, your religions and, uh, or your politics. I think it really is not necessarily part of what we do here. I would like you to like my records <laughs> and my movies and television shows. <laughs> so you, it's just uh, something that you have to work on constantly. But there's always a, a little segment of the press which doesn't respect that. And if they can't get an interview, they make up a story. Yes, Have they you do. experienced that? <laughs> yes. Mm. And again, uh, I guess it's part of the things that you work on as mm. part of the career. Um, you do the best that you can. You try to clear up any rumors that mm. are incorrect. Um, you make sure that they spell your name right when they say <laughs> things bad about you. <laughs> it's just part of it, yeah. uh, part of the adjusting to the lifestyle. Yeah.